Britain is a haven for all sorts of interesting wildlife. There's a huge variety of habitats for you to find cool animals in. But the issue is, sometimes they can be quite hard and remote to get to. You could come to an empty beach like this one, looking for oyster catchers or even curlews if you're lucky. Or you could come to forests like these and look for songbirds or squirrels up in the trees. Or if you're feeling in a bit of a peaceful mood, you could set up shop in one of the many bird hides we have around the country and let the wildlife come to you. But if you want to find probably the most bizarre and unique animal we have in the entire of the UK, you've got to go somewhere a little bit unexpected. In fact, the best habitat to find these animals are these harbour walls behind me. Yeah, I'm not kidding. These walls play host to the most unique animals I bet you never knew were here. They've been here for centuries and their existence is pretty much a mystery to everyone. Because in these walls behind me are thousands and thousands of Britain's wild scorpions. When you're at the seaside, amongst all the usual seaside animals, it's hard to imagine scorpions running around here as well. So, with that in mind, what on earth are they doing here? When you think of scorpions, you normally think like the Australian outback and big windswept deserts. And you'd be right in thinking that these guys are actually non-native. In fact, the last record of any sort of scorpion in the UK comes from fossil records about 330 million years old, back from when British Isles was part of the supercontinent Pangaea. So, how on earth did they get here? The reason these scorpions are here are all because of that. That is Sheerness Dock, an important point in British naval history. It's acted as a fort and a shipbuilding area for nearly 400 years. And at the start of the 19th century, an Italian ship arrived with some lovely Italian masonry. But they brought with them a little bit more than they expected. See, in those crates they brought here were hundreds and hundreds of tiny little scorpions. They wouldn't have seen them, they were far too small. When they dropped off the uh, masonry, the scorpions spread all across the town and set up shop in the harbour walls but they never spread any further than Sheerness. See, Sheerness is on the Isle of Sheppey, and the Isle of Sheppey is surrounded by water on all sides, and the only crossings to the mainland are across man-made bridges, which for a tiny arachnid are far too dangerous to cross, and the chances of enough scorpions getting across to start set up a stable population elsewhere is practically impossible. And so, here they stayed. And since then, they boomed their population. And at the last check a few years ago, it was estimated to be nearly 15,000 scorpions here. So, I reckon our chances of finding one later are pretty, pretty high. Heading back to the harbour walls, I thought it would be easy enough to spot the scorpions, but as is often the case with wildlife, there's no such luck. It turns out that they're just too well camouflaged in all the brickwork. Thankfully though, I know a surefire way to find them. And all I have to do is wait for night time. So the sun has finally gone down, but why have we had to wait for night time to find these scorpions? Well, other than them being nocturnal, there's also an interesting thing that happens when you shine a UV torch on a scorpion. So let's get cracking and I'll show you exactly what I mean. 
Now, I was expecting it to take quite a while to find the scorpions. They're pretty small, and this is a very big wall. But, thanks to my UV torch, it wasn't long until we spotted our first scorpion. Here we go, here we go, here, here, here. Okay, okay, okay. It's resting right on this brick here. And I'm gonna show you exactly why we use a UV torch for this. So if I use a regular torch, or if it were daytime, and shine it right where the scorpion is, it's on this rock, but you can barely see it. But if I put the torch away and use our UV torch, look at that. Glows like a Christmas tree. It is insane. <laughs> and this all happens because of a really, really tiny thin layer in the exoskeleton called the hyaline layer. And it has these weird chemicals and substances in it that reflect the UV light into the blue-green spectrum so that we can see it. So we know how they do it, but we don't know why they do it. There's a lot of theories. It could be for confusing their predators. It could be for signaling to other scorpions at night. It could be to um, protect themselves from the harmful UV rays of a desert. But one thing we can say for absolute certain is that this is really, really cool. Oh my God, there's actually scorpions in the UK. <laughs> right, I'm gonna see if we can get her out of the wall and get a proper look at her. This is a yellow-tailed scorpion. She's only a couple of inches long, but she has these huge, huge claws right at the front. And each claw from sort of head to tip of claw is about the length of her body. And because of the size of these claws, we know that this is how they like to subdue their prey. See, scorpions have two major lines of attack. They have their front claws and a stinger at the back. And now a scorpion will only really develop one or the other, because if you've got one strong set of claws, there's no point in also having really, really potent venom, because it's just wasteful for them. So, because she's got such strong claws to catch and kill her prey, she's got this really, really diddy little stinger with very, very weak venom. Because so what she'll do is she'll grab her prey and bring it right up to her mouth. And she's got little extendable mouth parts, which just shred the prey up into tiny, tiny pieces. And she just sucks it up like a hoover. And then when you bring the UV light onto her, she just glows. And it's just, it's a scorpion glowing on my hand. Oh. And if I were to walk up and down these walls and shine the UV torch like this, I would find dozens of these guys hiding out in all the brickwork behind me here. And the secret to their success mostly comes from their diet. See, yellow-tailed scorpions have an extremely low metabolic rate, how fast they burn energy. And because of this, they only have to eat about four or five times a year. And with a diet consisting of mostly wood lice, the occasional other insect, and on occasion, even other yellow-tailed scorpions, in cold climates like here in the UK, they're able to thrive because there's plenty enough food around for them. And because of this, they've now set up what's officially the most northerly colony of scorpions in the entire of Europe. Now, the question does get raised that because these scorpions are actually invasive, should they be allowed to stay? See, normally, when an invasive species rocks up on an island, the local population or ecosystem goes into decline. You just have to look at things like the American grey squirrel that came in and got introduced, and since then, our native red squirrel population has just plummeted. But the thing is, there are no native scorpions, so this guy has nothing to compete with. And because it has such a small and restrictive diet, it's not having any great impact on the wider ecosystem. So all they really do is just sit in these walls, have the odd woodlouse, and just live their lives quite peacefully. 
And since they haven't spread very far, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't keep these guys here. Because saying that we have wild scorpions in Britain is something that will never get old to me. But for now, she has been quite the model, but I think it's time I popped her back on the wall to let her get on with her evening. All right, off you go. Thank you.